What does it mean to say we here are a hearer of the law? What does it mean to say we are a doer of the law? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, wherever you are and whenever you are around the world. Welcome to this edition of the On Pilgrimage to the Scripture podcast, the Bible teaching program that takes you chapter by chapter and verse by verse through the scriptures. I'm your pilgrimage leader, Mike Queller, and in this podcast, we continue our study in the book of Romans, studying Romans chapter 2, verses 17 through 29. And we're going to look at the question, what does it mean to hear the law? What does it mean to do the law? And so we're going to take a look at that. But first, a word from our sponsor. Uh, come join the pilgrimage. Check out our Gab, MeWe, or Facebook pages on Pilgrimage to the Scripture. That's the place where you can get the notes and outlines associated with uh, this particular study. Just check it out, the files. Uh, go to YouTube. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like our video. Uh, let people know that uh, you appreciate uh, this teaching. Onward to our lesson. Now, here's the text that we're going to be looking at. Romans chapter 2, verses 17 through 29. Let's read it. it. Paul is now talking about the Jews. He's Before he's been talking about, in Romans chapter 2, he's been talking, first of all, about hypocrites who deny that they were sinning like the, the ones in Romans chapter 1. And then we looked at uh, the God's six principles for judgment. Now, in this uh, section, we're looking at God dealing with the Jews. And he says in verse 17, Indeed, you are called a Jew, and rest on the law, and make your boast of God, and know his will, and approve the things that are the more excellent, being instructed out of the law, and are confident that you yourself are a guide to the blind, a light to them who are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, having the form of knowledge and of truth in the law, you, therefore, who teach another, do you not teach yourself? You who preach that a man should not steal, do you steal? You who say, do not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? You who abhor idols, do you rob temples? You who make your boast in the law, do you dishonor God through breaking the law? For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you, as it is written. The law, uh, for circum as it is written, for circumcision is indeed profitable if you keep the law, but if you're a breaker of the law, your circumcision has become uncircumcision. Therefore, if an uncircumcised man keeps the righteous requirements of the law, will not his uncircumcision be counted as circumcision? And will not the physically uncircumcised, if he fulfills the law, judge you? who even with your written code and circumcision are a transgressor of the law. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is circumcision that which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew who is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, not in the letter, whose praise is not of man, but of God. <coughs> so this particular text is an explanation, an illustration of verses 12 through 13 in this chapter. Now, Paul says here that as many as have sinned without law shall, be, shall perish without law, and as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. So he's look, we're looking at the difference between hearers and doers. Now, Paul states... <clears throat> that the doers of the law will be justified, no matter whether, no, no matter who they are or where they come from. Even if they're Gentiles, even if they do the law, they'll be justified. And so now we have to ask the question, what does that mean? What does it mean to hear and to do? And to understand that, let's look at the purpose of the law as Paul tells us in Romans chapter three. So we have to look ahead in order to truly get the point of this. Now, if you were you know, a Jewish Christian living in Rome at the time, and maybe if, even if you were a Gentile Christian living in Rome at the time, you would have gotten this already. But we're not that. So we're going to look at, we're going to look ahead and we're going to see what Paul uh, has to say about the law. 
Now, Romans 3, 19 and 20, he says, Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law that every mouth might be stopped and all the world might become guilty before God. Therefore, by deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is knowledge of sin. But now, the righteousness of God, with, apart from the law, is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith apart from the deeds of the law. Shall we then make void the law through faith? Certainly not. On the contrary, we establish the law. So here's what Paul's saying in Romans chapter 3. He says, he shows us the purpose of the law is twofold. Verses 19 and 20. It shows that the purpose of the law is to put, to, to show us our sin. To show us that we're sinners, we're hopeless, there's no help for us in ourselves. We can't do it. And then the second point of the law is in verse 21. But uh, that he points us to Christ. The righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed, witnessed by the law and the prophets. The Old Testament, the Mosaic Covenant, all pointed forward to Christ. The Old Testament, the whole point of it is pointing us toward Jesus Christ. It's prophesying of the Messiah who was to come to pay for all the sins. So that's to do the law is to understand that. And so to do the law is to understand from the law that we're sinners, we're helpless, we're hopeless, there's nothing we can do. But Christ is the propitiation for us. And so it's to point us to the, to the fact of verse 28, that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. That's doing the law. It's to come to Christ in faith is doing the law. And we're going to talk about this more. And verse 31, it tells us the place of the law. He asks the question, Paul has just said, we we're justified by faith, not by works of the law. So somebody might conclude, well, what does that mean? Does that mean we can just ignore the law? No, we don't make void the law. We, we establish the law. In other words, we put it in its right place. <clears throat> we put it in its place. Its place is a, is a pointer to our sin. It's a pointer to Christ. <clears throat> and it shows us who we are, what we need, and where this where the resolution is. So that's putting the law in its place. And so if you hear the law, you understand that. And if you do the law, you come to Christ in faith and repentance. And so Paul is, is going to use that to teach the Jews something here. He says, indeed, you're called a Jew and rest in the law and make your boast of God and you know as well and approve the things that are more excellent being instructed out of the law and are confident that you yourself are a guide to the blind, a light of those who are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, having the form of knowledge and of truth in the law. So Paul is now talking to the Jews and he's saying, look, you think you're all that. You think you've got it. We've got the law. We approve the things out of the law. We're confident that by teaching the law, we can be a guide to those who are blind, to those who are in darkness, to those who are foolish, to those who are children. We have the form of knowledge and of truth in the law. Now, Paul knew this intimately. I mean, he was a Pharisee of the Pharisees, right? He understood all about how the Jews thought about the law. And what he's saying here is, is you've heard the law. You've heard it, all 613 laws, but they didn't do it. They thought they had fulfilled it perfectly. But as we, when we get to Romans 10, we're gonna see that they thought that was their righteousness in fulfilling the law perfectly or in hearing the law. But Paul is now gonna tell them, uh-uh, you just heard the law, but you haven't done it. So if we go forward into verse 21, it says, you therefore who teach another, <clears throat> okay, so you think you've got it, but <clears throat> you you teach another. Do you teach yourself? Do you do the law? Do you do the law? You who preach a man should not steal, do you steal? You who say, do not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? You who abhor idols, do you rob temples? You who make your boast of God, do you dishonor God through breaking the law? 
And verse 24, for the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. What he's saying here is, look, you say you know all the stuff about the law. You're a teacher about the law. Do you keep the, do you do the law yourself? And he's saying you don't. He, you don't. You're a blasphemer. You dishonor God because you dishonor God because you teach the law and then you break it. And so you blaspheme God. You're hypocrites. You profess one thing and you do something else. You're not sinlessly perfect. Because you're sinlessly not sinlessly perfect, the name of God is blasphemed. And so you have you are a hearer of the law, but you're not a doer of it. And so what does that mean? Well, he tells us they broke the law. Because they broke the law, they're no longer Jews. For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you, as it is written. For circumcision is indeed profitable if you keep the law. But if you're a breaker of the law, your circumcision has become un uncircumcision. Because the Jews broke the law, <clears throat> they're not really Jews. So Paul is, is just laying it on the line here. Now, he's, now Paul is talking in New Testament terms. When we get to Romans 11, we're going to see what he's talking about. That because they broke the law, they've been torn out of the olive tree. And the Gentiles have been grafted in. But if they do the law, they'll be grafted back in, he says, back over there in Romans chapter 11. Verse 26, therefore, if an uncircumcised man keeps the righteous requirements of the law, will not his uncircumcision <coughs> will not his uncircumcision be counted as circumcision? And will not the physically uncircumcised, if he fulfills the law, judge you, who even with your written code circumcision are a transgressor of the law? So again, look, someone who is a doer of the law, even if they're uncircumcised, and by remember, by doer of the law, we say someone who comes to Christ in faith and repentance. If someone fulfills the law, who has seen that the law points out their sin, who has seen that the law points them to Christ, who comes to Christ in faith and repentance, that's doing the law. If they keep the requirements of the law, that's the requirements of the law, they'll be counted as circumcised. Now, Paul's going to talk about this in Romans chapter, when he gets to chapter four. And so he's going to say that Abraham, Abraham, even though he didn't have the law, was a doer of the law because he obeyed because he came to Christ in faith. Remember the point here. The law, and I'm going to report, repeat this and repeat this and repeat this. The law points out your sin and points you to Christ. Paul is saying here that to do the law is to recognize your sin and to come in faith to Christ. That's doing the law. And so if you've done that, even if you're uncircumcised, you're counted as being circumcised. You're counted as being a Jew. And verse 28, for he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew who is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the letter, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but from God. <clears throat> so Paul points it out here. Obeying the outward requirements of the law and physical circumcision doesn't make you a Jew. All it does is make you a hearer of the law but you're not a doer. Just keeping the 613 commandments of the Mosaic Covenant makes you a hearer. It doesn't make you a doer because to be a doer, you would come to Christ in faith and repentance. This is what Paul's going to talk about in Romans chapter 10 when we get there. To be a Jew, you have to be circumcised in your heart. Now, Circumcision, regardless of what somebody, some people have told you, circumcision is not a type of baptism. Baptism does not replace circumcision. Circumcision is a type of regeneration, the new birth of the Holy Spirit causing you to be born again and coming to live in you. Circumcision is a type of regeneration. The cutting away of the foreskin symbolized the removal of the flesh and the implantation of a new nature. 
or regeneration of, the, of your nature. What Paul is alluding to here is you have to be regenerated in your spirit. All the physical things that men celebrate, circumcision, baptism, doing this, doing that, all your good works, you know, trying to keep the Ten Commandments, all these things that men celebrate, they're meaningless. They don't mean anything before God. They do nothing for you before God. It's only when we do the law by repentance toward God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, following the regeneration of our spirit that makes you one of God's people. That's what makes you one of God's people. So all these Jews, so Paul's saying, look, all you Jews, you're not really Jews. If all you do is just hear the law, repeat it, and tell other people to do the 613 commandments, you're not doing the law. To do the law is to understand that you're a sinner, that Christ is the resolution for your sinner, for your sin, and to come to Christ in faith and repentance, that's doing the law. So, summing it up, this section illustrates for us what hearing and doing mean in the case of the Jews. The Jews heard the law, but because they wanted to establish their own righteousness, did not do the law. Romans chapter 10, verses 1 through 4. In doing the law, <clears throat> this means you follow the point of the law. We acknowledge our sin, and we come to Christ in repentance and faith for the forgiveness of sins. The Jews broke the law. They heard the law, but didn't do it, and thus they're not really Jews. Their physical circumcision meant nothing anymore. Their keeping of the law meant nothing anymore. Their tithing and offering meant nothing of the law. Their doing the prescribed sacrifices meant nothing because they didn't do the law. They didn't come to. They didn't do the purpose of the law, which is to point you to Christ and to come to Christ in faith and repentance. Even the Gentiles. So, but so even the Gentiles who do the law, in other words, come to Christ in faith and repentance, will be God's people. They are, if you come to Christ in faith and repentance, you're circumcised in your heart, in your spirit. And that's why they're truly God's people, not the Jews. And we're going to see this more when we get to Romans chapter 10 and 11. But for right now, this is a summary. The point of the law is to point out your sin, to point you to Christ, so that you come to do the law is to come to Christ in faith and repentance. That's what Paul is teaching us here. And that's why the Jews are not really Jews. And that's why the Gentiles are in fact God's people because they came to him in faith. Until the next time, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Make sure you come join the pilgrimage. Check out our Gab, MeWe, and Facebook pages. Ask your questions there. Get our notes and outlines. Interact with others on the page. Go to YouTube. Like our video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. And until next time, uh, be blessed. <laughs>